pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. One other point, if I could, you'll see that we have one of our council members absent tonight, Mr. Don Simon. Don, uh, as I understand it, uh, based on Mr. Bodie and also Jerry, that he had uh, <coughs> rotary cuff surgery this morning, and so he has an excused absence tonight, and we wish him well. So, Don, if you're listening, heal fast. I know what you're going through. I did it a year and a half ago. It's not fun. Okay, that's uh, rotary cuff surgery I'm talking about. So anyways, we had the pledge and we had the roll call. Silence any electronic devices, if you would, please. And we will now additions or approval of the agenda as presented. Mr. Mayor, if I could. Yes, please. Go ahead, Mr. Bowden. I believe I sent out to you, I think it was yesterday, resolution 2020-09, appointment of 2020 election judges. Yeah, but you presented it here. If, yep. if, we, if you're comfortable, if we could add that to consent agenda item F. There are no new names on there, the same judges as last year. And then also on consent agenda item D, resolution 2020-02, if you're so inclined to ask uh, to add Luke Greiner. Oh, under two, Greiner. Yeah, that's in the Greiner. consent. Greiner yes. to Planning Commission. Yep. That's the two additions I have. So we would implement 2020-02, uh, the actual appointment would be Luke, uh, and I said based from the consent agenda deliberations, it certainly looked that route, and that would be for a balance of the term of the, uh, what used to be Dave Evnett's. Uh, the one-year appointment. Yeah, Dave, Dave Meyer's uh, one-year appointment, and then that would fulfill that. Okay, Rod. That's it. Okay. Any I would uh, like to add something under other, but a little information for the Sportsman's Club. Okay. Jerry Sportsman's. Remind me when I get to that point, Jerry, if you would, yep. please. Okay. Motion would be in order to. Motion. So moved. With, with additions. The, with the additions. Thank Second. you. Motions by Bill, seconded by, Jer uh, by Brian to accept the consent agenda or the uh, agenda as presented with those three corrections or modifications. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by stating aye. 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 Contrary, same sign. Any abstention? Seeing none, passed unanimous. Okay. Public comment, um, three minute limit, no sharing or allotment of minutes. Those who would care to address the council as it relates to city governance issues. Um, Please advance to the lectern to share name, address, and if there's any clarification that we need to have, we'll certainly uh, ask of those. Otherwise, you know, the drill will be, uh, if it's something that we feel that should be city administrator, we will share that to ask you to go to that. So please proceed. So if I'm like this, I'm just a test. Does this work out for you? But then if I look that Daryl? When Brad got here and you turned it up a little bit, it got better. But okay. when you turn your face, it just cuts out up back there. So you're not suggesting that I should just forget about these two? No. That's, that's my style. I want to have Thank deliberation. You, and, uh, yeah. But if either of us just fo focus on that, you know, that we make sure that we get our uh, voices being heard. Thank you. Any other comments from the... Multitude as it relates to the governance of the city of Rockville. Now is your time. We do have two public hearings during the course of the evening. So if it's either the billing ordinance or the amendment to the zoning ordinance, we would address those at that point. 
It is. Please proceed in your name, sir. Okay. Kevin Voigt, uh, taxpayer and voter in Rockville, Minnesota. And I just wanted to uh, say that I was concerned with the amount of the increase in the taxes. There was an ordinance change in uh, the Schneider edition there. You guys created a, or they gave him an 18-foot sidewall over there because the guy had a big semi-truck he wants to put in his garage. So you guys do grant those uh, changes in the uh, building ordinances all the time. And it is kind of nice to be able to voice our, the public opinion on those type of things. So, thank you. Thanks for those comments. Any others that would care to address the uh, council? Now is the opportunity. Hello, it's Nathan Gill, 24994 Haywood Road. I don't know if this is the appropriate time to bring it up or not, but the reason why I'm here is I'm very upset about the snow plowing that's been happening. Our road is, I think the first two snowfalls that got plowed and then the recent last three, four snow plows that never got plowed at all. It was only a couple inches each time. But over the time it got packed down and then went the warmer weather, we had six inches of slush on the road. Never got plowed off. And then we got an inch and a half, two inches of snow on top of it, and never got plowed again. So I got a picture of our road. It looks like a minimum maintenance road that you'd see up in northern Minnesota. And I talked to the plow driver about it and he's like, well, I just forgot to plow that road well. How do you forget the plow road when you drive by it when you're plowing the other half-man road and then forget to plow it four times in a row? But yet my taxes went up every year and I get absolutely nothing out there in the country. And I just feel that I don't know what's going on with my tax money, but all I get out there is they grade the road a couple times a year and they plowed it, what, four times now because they plowed it twice after I bitched about it. And it's just, I'd really like to know where my tax money is going. And when I talked to the plow driver, he said that they were denied money to get another plow truck, but yet they got money for another fire truck. Well, they're going to spend 170000 or whatever it is on the fire truck. Can they put a plow on the front of it? Because the way I see it, if they don't plow our road, how are they going to get rescue vehicles down there if there is an incident? It seems like, you know, for the amount of money that I'm paying on taxes, I'm getting absolutely nothing. And it's kind of upsetting to be a resident in Rockville when I think everyone up here is upset about the taxes going up, but we're not seeing anything get done with the money. Because I don't understand from what I heard, you know, the roads that needed improvement, they didn't get done in the past how many years, so now it's all getting piled up at one time. But yet, it'd be nice just to get my road plowed, because I think everyone else gets their road plowed. So I don't know if there's something that can be done about that. And I also noticed the past couple of summers, during the summer months, when a big storm would come through, the fire department's out clearing trees off the roadways. I don't know why the fire department would have to do that, because as a taxpayer, what I'm seeing is the city of Rockville should be out there cutting these trees that are dead, hanging over the road, should be cleared throughout the summer months, winter months, whenever, so that when a storm does come through, that you don't have all these dead trees laying across the road. Causing, you know, there's no way you can get rescue vehicles out there when you got power lines down, trees across the road and and whatever. So it'd be just nice if they'd take that in consideration and maybe do, I don't know if they have to do checks on the guys doing the plowing and whatnot, just to make sure they're actually doing their job. Or Time, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Thank you. Wrap up your comments, Nathan. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Tootie Hermanitz, 211 First Street West. I really came tonight because I was upset about uh, what the audit shows and how water is paying for water. And if you look at the audit, it is separated. It shows in detail where the money came from and where it goes. So I'm glad to hear tonight that you're going to have it analyzed. 
and so that you can see what to me was quite obvious. Because otherwise you're going to chase all us fixed income people out of town if we can sell. Okay? Thank you. Thanks, Terry, for those comments. Any others that would care to address the council? Now is your time. We do have a fairly heavy agenda this evening, and hopefully we can move along at a good clip so we don't need to be out in this miserable weather, or at least from my perspective as I get older, I'm starting to dread these cool nights. I want to be close to my fireplace. Um, second chance, anyone that would care to address the council? Now is your time. Ann Phila, 234 4th Street East here in Rockville. I don't know, are you voting on the sales tax tonight or are you just discussing it tonight? Or are you not even discussing it this evening? There will be council action on that and it's underneath uh, on page 122. It's uh, resolution 2020-06. And so, yes, that time will come. We will more than likely unless it's tabled, but this group makes that decision. Cor correct. So, so we have input, whether we want it or not, or we don't have input, or I, I'm not sure. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. This is not for dialogue. It's for comments. You certainly can make comments on the sales use during your three minutes. No. Okay. I don't think we should have it. That's my <laughs> comment. <laughs> I mean, we, we're having our taxes go up, apparently. We're having the water things go up. You know, I'm not on a fixed income yet, but getting close, and I agree with Tootie on that. And so, can we, you know, maybe just wait on one thing instead of putting it all on our plates right now? And why do we need the sales tax, and what's it going to be used for, and how important is it that we have it um, attached or started at this point? Because, you know, too much your income can't take a big change all at one time and I don't think anybody here tonight can take a big change all at one time so and I understand from what I've understood you're trying to catch up on cert certain things but I would have to do it gradually in my income in my budgeting I can't just do everything at once if something breaks down I got to make do or I got to use something that's used or repairable and I just think, you know, too much at one time is too much. And we didn't elect you to change everything at one time. I know you're trying to do some catch up, but you have to take into consideration, hopefully, that, you know, we're not, we can't just lay out a lot of money when we didn't plan for it. You've been looking at planning for this. You know, maybe we can't plan for this right now. Maybe we have to have a little breather in between here before everything changes and you don't want to chase people out of town you know i don't think because then you're not going to have the taxes anyway if you somebody leaves their house go do you get the taxes anyway i'm not sure if you try to put tax on what little bit we do have in town and i'm guessing it would be taxes at bees liquor and be those kind of places was my guess i don't know but you start adding tax onto that you want to chase any more little businesses we have in town, out of town, because people are going to go, well, forget it. I'm not going to shop here. It's already a little more expensive, but it's convenient, and we don't want to lose it like we lost the gas station. So really, why do this to us? Why kill our little town? Thank you. Thank you, Ann. <laughs> any else? Uh, and I'm the facilitator of the meeting, and so flexibility from time to time. And when we get to that point of the sales tax resolution, I'm going to ask Mr. Bodie or, uh, to help us the process when that time comes. So it's not just merely voting up or down, but the basis of why. So prepared for that, Mr. Bodie, when the time comes. And there is stuff in the packet, so read the packet. That helps you inform a lot. It would take state legislation. First of all, a resolution would have to pass here. Then it would go to, resolu uh, to the state. The state I think we'll talk about that oh, at the time. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. And, and then I would go uh, to the full, full, full group in November for an election uh, referendum. 
Thank you. Yes. So at the time, Mr. Bode, if you would, any other comments as it relates to the governance of the city of Rock? Great city of Rock. No. Those of you who I correspond with, you see, I always close it with that closing statement. Carol Dittman, County Road 47, St. Rockville. Um, since we've got such a nice crowd here tonight, I wanted to bring it to some of these people's attention. One of the questions that came up in November and December had to do with city staff rate increases, especially the COLA. Now, there was a citizen here, that a Rockville citizen here, that was doing some work and looking at comparing Stearns County with the city of Rockville. And I guess the question I would have in time to come is, why are we doing step increases plus COLA increases cost of living adjustment, which was considered 2.7 this year, plus their step increase. And really, for the size of our city, it's not an awful lot in taxes when it comes to that. But everything adds up. And I know they've got a lot of pressure because there's a lot of citizens that aren't happy with certain things that are going on, which doesn't make it a real enjoyable job sometimes. But nevertheless, why? Does every city, every county do a COLA rate increase? Because doesn't that, okay, you get your step increase in the COLA, and with the COLA, isn't that step increased by the COLA amount? No? Yes? No dialogue, please. Yeah. And, and that would be a question, that, Carol, that would be a great one for you either to contact one of us individually or city administrator would yeah. have that I don't want any process. answers tonight it's just we've got such a great crowd here and it's been a concern of a number of people that have shown up at past meetings it's just great so I wanted everybody to realize what was going on thank you thank you for those comments Carol <laughs> others that would care to address the council we do have a lot of agenda items, so if there's repetition. Let's move on. Yeah. Any other comments? And I have a third call, not seeing anybody making a mad dash. Okay, we will close the public input portion of the, um, well, no, this would have been the uh, public comment. We are now going to move forward to item number seven, uh, acknowledgement of the donations that were presented to the city. And there was two of them, one from Cold Spring, uh, annual contribution to the Rockville Fire Department for $500, and another one from the Rockville Lions for the Lions Park Improvement for $616.92. Uh, motion to approve. Second. Motion by Bill, seconded by Brian, to accept the donations, and that would be um, was that a, uh, yeah, resolution 2020-01. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by stating aye. 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 Uh, those opposed, nays. Any abstentions? None. Passed unanimous. Item number eight, approval of the December 2019 bills paid. Note any conflict of interest bills for the council members. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second it. Motion's been made and second to approve the bills. Uh, Jerry, just bringing it out, there's a check number 019604. Yes. And we're aware of that. Okay, I'll call the question. All those in favor of that motion signify by stating aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Any abstentions? Seeing none, we, uh, that passed unanimous. Okay. Was I, there a, an abstention on one check? I did check? not hear it. I, I advanced it to Jerry if he'd care to abstain on that. I did abstain. Yeah. So if he uh, okay, oh, okay. Thank so you. you abstained on that one. So Jerry, let the prec let the record show that Jerry abstained from voting on check number zero one nine six zero four, and that was for services rendered for snow removal that Jerry has done for us for the city. Okay, uh, consent agendas items A through F. Uh, the F was the included one, which would have been the. Uh, Judges, uh, election, election judges. judges, and we also added Luke Greiner and the line item number four to be the appointed uh, planning commission. A motion to a motion to approve the consent agenda with the two additions. Very good. Is there a second to that motion? Second. 
Okay, if anybody wants to see, they're up on the, the, up on the, on the dais, not on the dais, but there, there's F, A through F. We will call the question. All those in favor of that motion, signify by stating aye. 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 Those opposed, nays, any abstentions, seeing, hearing none, passed. Public hearing, fire bill ordinance, ordinance 2022-104. And this was action that we took last month, but it's in an ordinance rather than just a motion that was made. And so it's just clarification. And if I'm wrong with that, Mr. Bode, now is the time, please. And so it's, that's no, Mr. Item. Mayor, you did. The council did approve to charge for services for fire emergency service at the, lot, at the December meeting. This is putting that uh, action in, in ordinance form. I'm sorry. Um, I was delinquent and did not was did not get it posted in the paper in time to put the ordinance on the December agenda, so that's why it's on this one. Okay. And just to recap, I believe it's uh, anything to do, not structure fires, but any uh, other fires, false alarms, all of those type of things. This ordinance allows the council to bill for emergency services by fee schedule. The fee right. schedule states that you're only billing for auto-related incidents. Yeah. So it refers back to the yeah. fee structure that we have. So that's what we're doing. I'm glad you clarified that because I've gotten a number of calls. People are wondering if we're going to be charging them for medicals and fires. We are not. This is strictly for automobile accidents. If you check your insurance, 90-some um, percent, or you're already being covered for 500 bucks. So. And that seems to be the level, and that's the fee that we created. So that's okay. So, okay, why is all this under this ordinance number then? I'm kind of... At a loss here. I mean, there's a lot of. It doesn't just say vehicle accidents. It's got all this other billing stuff in it. That's doesn't include that. Under section section two. So the ordinance establishes an ordinance to bill for fire or emergency services. The charge for that service is based on the city fee schedule. The fee schedule that you adopted in December is a zero charge for fire calls with the exception of vehicle related incidences. Okay. Yeah. And so it says not, but not limited to it. These gives you an obvious, a not box, you know, loads of water, and that's all in the fee structure. But this is a formal ordinance, and that's standard in the governance when you have something that needs to have some whereases or some additional information that's the proper way of doing it so it's really just cleaning up what we did and so it's a document that is put away so we have different council members different city administrators down the road they know what it is that we did well, i just want to make it clear to the public that emergency calls structure fires grass fires no charge on that vehicle accidents only vehicle incident okay Whatever you want to call it, just so everybody knows. That's what I just said. Yep. Okay. So to that end, uh, a motion would be in order, I believe. I make a motion. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. You we need a public to, hearing. Mr. Public hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's. I thought we were putting the cart in front of the horse. Oh, we need to do the public hearing. You should have poked hearing. me, buddy. You should have poked me. I stand corrected. I have egg on my face. Oh well. I knew that happened. So. Um, Back up, please. Uh, we're not doing anything until we have the public. So public, anyone that wants to come forward as it relates to the proposed ordinance 2022-104, and that is for the fire billing. Now would be the time to come forward to the lectern and uh, share your concerns. And why I brought it up is because I wanted them to understand before they came up and thought we're charging for all this stuff or not. Got my two cents. And I did have an asterisk. Mr. Bode asked me, he said, make sure you don't miss it. Oh, yeah, remember the asterisk. <laughs> okay. So, oh, well. So, uh, Doc, my pay, it's not that much. We'll start okay. kicking you now. There you go. Any other? Yeah, please. Uh, same ritual, uh, name and address. Uh, Kevin Voigt, 7819 County Road 141. I was just wondering, you're talking about automobile accidents. Well, the fire department also uh, responds to, say, like a boating accident. Uh, some type of a rescue out there. We had a helicopter crash out here uh, recently. Uh, would there be charges for those type of 
vehicles? And in, in, in public, uh, yeah, we would certainly, and I'm quite sure the intent is when we think about it is it's like the base fee for fire department, the taxes paid by everyone, but when the vehicle goes out and it goes to specific incidences, that's when it would go and be like a user fee. And the user fee, there's certain things that we're not, certain, anything to do with medical, because we don't want to have the people say, oh, I'm having a heart attack, but they're going to charge me $500. I'm not, you know, we don't want to do that. All we're doing is trying to help create a larger base of income coming in so the users pay for that service. But everybody pays for the apparatuses, the training, all of those type of things. When the vehicle starts up, goes out in certain incidences, then they would have to pay that. And that's being covered, as Bill said, by virtually all Vehicle the incidents only. I will get a definition of vehicle. Did that help you, sir? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Good point. Any other comments as it relates to the public hearing for fire billing? Seeing none. Motion to close the public hearing. Motion has been made. Motion has been made to second to close the public hearing on ordinance uh, fire billing. Uh, all those in favor of that motion signify by stating aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Abstentions, none. Passed. Now, do we want to act on this one before we go to the next public hearing? Action. Act on it. What's the question? No. I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second it. Motion to approve ordinance 2020-104 as it relates to fire billing ordinance. All the, any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of the motion signify by stating aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Abstention, seeing none. Hearing none. Passing I just none. want to make one more comment on this. Maybe the is the public is the reason we consider the vehicle accidents is most of the calls that go out are for highway 23 and a lot of those people are not resident for Rockville. so I'm just trying to <coughs> cover the cost a little bit for non-residents so. but we cannot we cannot uh, any if you're a resident or rockville or not either way you get charged you know right. you can't but the higher percentage are not well, of residents. course yes good point Okay, we will now open up the public hearing. I just got a quote from Brian. I, I would, we're now going to go into a public hearing for amendments to the City of Rockville zoning ordinance. Not literally. So, to that end, now is the time to come forward if anyone would care to address the Council as it relates to the proposed ordinance 2020-105, which relates to the Rockville zoning ordinance. It's on page 44 of your packet. 45. And it's anything in red. Um, this was discussed quite heavily last evening at the planning and zoning and the uh, advisory group. Uh, a lot of it is cleaning up the word facing versus abutting. Abutting is a more appropriate word because signs many times are turned on a pedestal nowadays so that they're facing if you have oncoming and Outgoing traffic to see it rather than from should, the facade. Should we not be having a? Uh, I was just going to yes, say. The public. Well, the, the planning and zoning is recommending approval. I know we should. You should be giving us a report. No, but I think the public has the opportunity the public, right. to give us that information first if they want to. Okay, Unless, you're, all right. You're going to do that after the fact. Well, it's the I council guess. that does the public hearing on the ordinance. The planning commission has an opinion, but they're not doing the. I just thought maybe if you I was explained what was happening at the report. Okay. Well, if the public now wants to, and we will allow the public to uh, give, uh, no, 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 Bill, no. give Bill an opportunity to share uh, when the time comes. So, uh, unless you want, this is governance. If somebody wants to have Bill explain what all transpired last night, uh, uh, we can go that route too. What's the wishes? Let's hear from we the floor should first. Uh, open and close your public hearing. Okay. Continue. Uh, anyone that has uh, compelling information as it relates to this, a lot of it, like I stated, is just uh, more Let them talk. clarity. Let them talk. Yeah. Uh, Amy Grinsteiner, Hubert Lane. I just would like to advocate for what Jerry suggested that we hear the report first. So it's hard to know what to comment on when you've done all the work. Maybe we would have some comments on. No, Amy, you Fun. were supposed to go online last night and look this right. up. <laughs> <laughs> so, and if that makes a difference, I would appreciate hearing the reports, and then I would kind of know if I should comment. So, I'm just giving you a hard time. 
I'll yield to Mr. Bill, uh, to, uh, Bill if you want to make some Okay, I'll, I'll give a report. Sure. Okay, so planning and zoning uh, had a lot of discussion about this part of the ordinance last night. And basically, uh, the first part is talking about signs, freestanding signs. And we clarified between city, Highway 23 corridor, Highway 94 and 23 corridor. Um, move it down. And uh, what we looked at uh, was height, sign uh, width and, and square feet, and between freestanding signs and signs on buildings. We also looked at this area uh, to compare it from residential to rural residential, which is a new concept here in uh, Rockville over the last couple of years. So uh, we extended the Highway 23 signs to 30 feet. Um, if you currently know the Freedom Auto sign out here on 23, that's 30 feet. That was done by variance. Um, and the reason for that is because Highway 23 is considerably higher than the boulevards on the property. So we, to get the signs up there, we also increased the square feet. Um, out, on out on 94, we did pretty much uh, change those uh, to uh, 800 feet for maximum sign area. That's square feet. That's a large sign. If you go down anywhere on 94 and see a truck stop, that's pretty much that sign. Um, we changed the word from facing to abutting because signs do not face 23 or 94. You, they're, you know, they're off to the side. They really don't face. So we talked about abutting rather than, than facing. Um, Buddy, 94, we added 94 corridor to 800 feet. I weigh 23 to 30 feet. I'm just quickly going through this. Now we're talking about accessory structures uh, in residential areas and agricultural uses. Um, there was a lot of discussion about how big we should go without a variance. Uh, right now we're going up to 2,400 square feet, uh, 70,000 square feet to 85,000. Uh, which is the property size, and that's two acres. Um, they can build a maximum of a 2,400 square foot, square foot building with 14 foot sidewalls without having to come to the city for a variance. So anything bigger than that would still be on the variance side. So this, we recommended approval. Amy, did I help you out? Okay, no, no, I'm, okay. And just if I could, there was this discussion earlier this evening in the workshop and for those who weren't there and so Don who was not here tonight and Jerry I happened to be an observer last night at the meeting and there was virtually no negative there was no uh, negative comments no, whatsoever no and this gives Mr. Bodie the flexibility of something more prescriptive instead of him as administrator having to go and look at the gray area it's in whenever you do zonings or whenever you do building there's minimums and then there is the gray area so this gives it more specific so that mr Bodhi comes in somebody says this is what my dream is he looks in here he doesn't have to say oh is this black is it white is it gray it's prescriptive and now if we go ahead with it, assuming that the public sees the validity in this and we go forward that is a living document that continues to change. So just because we did this once tonight, we did a lot of things last year, and you guys remember, it was a full year. We're continuing to work on it, to hone it, to give it more. We're, we're a growing city, and we need to have our house in order as, as planned growth continues. And this is one great stepping stone to go. Continued uh, comments from the public, please. And if not, then I would, uh, well, we'll give you another 30 seconds, and if not, then we will ask a motion to close the public hearing. I see no... I'll, I'll make that motion to close okay. the hearing. We will close the... Uh, oh, second. Second. And uh, discussion. Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in fa oh, of favor of closing the public input portion of the uh, relevant to... Um, Rockville Zoning Ordinance. Lost it there for a second. Uh, seeing no other discussion, all those in favor of that motion signify by aye to close the public portion. Aye. 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 Okay, sorry about that. Now, what's the wishes of the council? A motion would be in order to accept. Make a motion to approve 
the zoning changes as presented. So all of those things that were in the yes. red that we have here, nothing modifying? 2020-105. Being yep. added in the red, then we made me talk. Uh -oh. Because section eight should be in the red, and I, it's black. It's a new description of what is the definition of Interstate 94. Put an asterisk there, that is, that's new, that's under definitions, and it defines what Interstate 94 for. And there was no dialogue as released. No, it's last it's perfectly fine. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for that clarification. And I'll second your motion, Brian. Okay. You made the motion. Great. Brian made the motion, seconded by Bill, to advance 2020-105 ordinance. I'll call the question. All those in favor of that motion signify by stating aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Seeing no abstentions, passed unanimous. Department reports, Planning Commission, Bill. Okay, we have a number of things on our agenda tonight. The first one is um, rezoning. And I'm sorry if I say the name wrong again, and I apologize. Uh, Lisa Marie Knightsky. Ha, got it. Um, they want to rezone uh, 60 acres parcel, which is Ag 40 to a rural residential. And then uh, next on the agenda, I'm going to talk about the um, qualified minor subdivision. But the property contains 60 acres approximately. Purpose of rezoning is to subdivide uh, additional uh, remaining acres of 55 after we subdivide. And then 10 notices of public hearing were sent out. Uh, we went to a public hearing last night. We had um, one individual actually talk for it. Um, so this property actually is just north of uh, Duane's property on 139. So we're recommending approval. Okay. Questions, comments from any of the council members as it relates to Ordinance 2020-103 rezoning? Apparently all 60 acres qualify under the rural residential requirements. And there's lots of wetlands in there, so there will be if, when, and if, and when it goes forward. But really, the second portion of this, I think, Bill will agree, is the most important part of, it, and that's that five acres that needs to be the homestead or the uh, thing. So we'll call the question. Um, or a, you had anything else, a, Jerry? No, that'll be it. Make a motion to approve the rezoning ordinance 2020-103. Brian made a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion second uh, to um, advance ordinance 2020-103, the rezoning of the LMN properties. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of that motion signify by stating aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Any abstentions? Hearing none, passed unanimous. Continue, please, Bill. Uh, the next part is the same property. Uh, only they want to do a qualified minor subdivision of five acres, which is a current building site uh, from that 60 acres. Um, five acre building site, uh, the, I believe we did have one applicant uh, talk for it. Uh, the was It was reassured that if this does get approved, there is some uh, road concerns. Dwayne, if you want to talk about that. Oh, I, and what I was bringing up last night as a citizen, and that was that the five acres that's being carved off of this 60, yeah. right now a net net, it's five point, virtually nothing more than 5.001 or something like that. So if, if there's expansion in the future, they couldn't carve off anything off of this because then it would fall underneath the minimum of that five acre threshold that we have. So if there is, and it's, it's brought up there, uh, Bill and Adeline Boucher's property is to the north of that. Diane and I are to the south, but there's another area where the, the chicken barn and, and the primary home and that. That's the portion that we're talking about. And so none of that could be used for future expansion if there was going to be a road. And you'll see a lot of the wetlands in the back, deep ravines and stuff like that. So it's a great hunting area. Uh, somebody brought that to my attention, Jerry. Somebody that might be close to your heart or something like that. So. We heard that last night. You yeah. might be on the commission. So anyways. Planning Commission is recommending approval. Yep. Okay. Other comments as it relates to this request? Make, make a motion to approve resolution 2020-03. Resolution 
there a second to Brian's motion? I'll second it. Motion's been made by Brian, seconded by uh, Jerry to advance 2020-103. Uh, that is the resolution that would put the LLC in a, um, into a what are we going to call that? A administrative plan. Qualified minor subdivision, which can be done if there's no more than one lot added, can done by that. So, all those in favor of that mo Oh, any other discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of that motion, signify by stating aye. 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 Any opposed? Nays. Any abstentions? Visually none. Uh, next one is a sign ordinance requested by Francis Lensmeyer uh, from Stickney Hill. Uh, property address is 1380 Prairie Drive, Rockville, Minnesota. Uh, for those of you, just clarify, it's right next to uh, the auto place on 23 with the, the sign that I brought up before. It's just this side. Um, construct a new 30 foot high freestanding sign. Uh, and they've got on their application facing, but it's abutting. Highway 23, which our current ordinance, and I want I need to explain this because this variance came before the Planning Commission before we changed the sign ordinance. So they had to go for a variance. They wanted a 30-foot uh, high sign just as the one next to it. Property is zoned Industrial 1, 2.74 acres. Uh, the neighboring sign is uh, 30 feet. 11 public hearing notices were mailed out. Uh, nobody spoke uh, against this. Planning Commission is recommending approval. Okay, Council, you've heard the recommendation from the Planning Commission group. What's the wishes? I make a motion to approve Resolution 2024. Okay, I'll second it. Motion by Jerry, seconded by Brian to advance Resolution 2020 04. I'll call the question. All those in favor of that motion signify by stating aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Any abstentions? Passed unanimous. Please proceed, Bill, number four. Uh, I'm scrambling here. Yeah, you're fine. Okay, uh, 4A, the final plat, resolution 202005. Uh, the final plat known as Hilltop Woods. John and Lisa Lutkin. Uh, property was rezoned from Ag 40 to rural residential with an PUD overlay. Lot size is 30, approximately 30 acres. Uh, they have five lots uh, plotted out in that particular area, purposes residential development. Uh, it meets city uh, zoning requirements. Uh, proposed access road would be public. Uh, we had a, plan a public hearing uh, or planning commission last night. Uh, we are recommending approval with, I gotta find it. That would be on page 79. No, but the, the new agreement. Marty, can you help me? Uh, the final plat was approval with the um, Justin's letter. They, I, I have to. Yeah, we have three items to take care of. The yep. first one is the approval plat. And we need a separate action on the vote. The second the third action Yeah, so we, we, had a, we got a letter from our attorney. Why can't I find it? Oh, <laughs> thank you, sir. I owe you. Or did you take it off my desk? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, the final plat, uh, recommended final plat, it will be conditional upon compliance with the comments in the city engineer's memo and upon the developer entering into the draft developer agreement and providing all security and paying all fees set forth herein. So we're recommending approval upon uh, that agreement. Okay, and so there's three actions all relating to the same parcel or the same uh, RR development up there. Uh, separate, actions. separate actions. And so motion would be in order and it's to regarding- approve final prior resolution 2020-05. Okay. And, describe it. and I'll second that. Okay, you've heard the motion in the second as it relates to the final plat resolutions 2020-05. Any other additional discussion? Um, and this is just the plat, and the it's up on the 
on the podium or on the uh, what are we going to call it the visual aid you'll see a lot of uh, there's some wetlands and there's some property that's impoundment of water or retention ponds that's generated from what's going to be the future public property and that needed to be described and I think that's one of the developers agreements or something like that I'm ahead of myself let's talk uh, uh, any other discussion if I could mr. mayor as it relates to the final plan okay. well you'll tell me <laughs> I wouldn't mind for record of the discussion on the vote if you could ask the engineer to describe oh Should we do it now or we do it in the developers agreement no. I, I think it's under developers agreement because really it's the public road and then and, but what's the wishes if you want to whatever you say yeah we have a decision as a council to make as it relates to the end result of the roads themselves and that would be more in my mind at least under the developers agreement that we would have to make sure so that we accept the layout and the wetlands delineation and the water impoundment or retention ponds all of that then we get into the specifics of the developers agreement we would then have Justin give us his view of what we need to do to make sure that the city is covered okay so right now it's just the layouts and all of that final plan call the question yep. okay so there was a motion in a second over here. okay so we will call the question all those in favor of the final plan resolutions 2020-05 please signify by stating aye aye, aye. Aye. Those opposed, nays. Any abstentions? Hearing none. Passed. Uh, please proceed with the developers, or do you want to yield to? Uh, I'm going to yield to uh, Justin. Justin, please. And and I think Justin, what Mr. Bodie was requesting in that is the placement of sand recommendation. If you can just embellish us a bit about that, but uh, remember, spoon feed us. We're not all into engineering world. Sure, Mayor and Council. Uh, in my memorandum dated December 31st, 2019, it does reference it. In, uh, we're talking about item number one in that memorandum. Uh, we did have a uh, several correspondence back and forth during the plan review process with the developer and the developer's engineer regarding the road section. Uh, the initial recommendation from the developer's uh, geotechnical consultant was a, a, a bit different than, uh, than following a subsequent recommendation essentially from them after they started grading the road and seeing the soils out there. Um, nonetheless, uh, we had a meeting to kind of talk through that, and um, initially there was a, a requirement of 12 inches of sand and then, uh, and then a lesser amount, I believe with eight inches of class five aggregate base, um, and then the two the surfaces, two layers on top of that. And um, the 12 inches of sand was essentially uh, removed, but then the class five was bumped up to 12 inches of class five. Um, so there was additional class five and strength gain up like And just to and also the fabric? Yes, and the oh, fabric okay. was added as well. So uh, the final recommendation um, is there on item number one, and uh, it is contingent upon a roll test uh, being uh, performed in the spring prior to any additional work being performed out there uh, that the city engineer would have to sign off on that. And then additionally, the developer has extended the warranty period. That would be part of the development. Very good. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, so the developer's agreement, and the only one that I have uh, in the discussion mode, in the developer's agreement, many times the, not the sack and whack, because that wouldn't, uh, sewer availability charge, water availability charge, are not relevant uh, in this case, because it's not, but the, uh, the park, dedication. park dedication fee typically would be when it gets the building permit taken rather here, he has to pay that before and is there a reason that this is different than previous development uh as well yeah. I had it paid before we okay. well in my world when i did it it was uh, and it was basically for cash flow or something like that and i i don't know if it's a deal breaker this is small but if it was a, a hundred been unit, no pushback. okay and schneider's oh, that's how we did it with schneider's okay Okay, well, we'll leave it at that. That's what was advanced, and I'm not here to uh, go and throw you know, snow on the, on the fire or something like that. So, 
Anyways, I, I see Mr. Lutkin has Gan. I'll give yeah, you. Yeah, John Lutkin, then the yeah. developer. It'll, it'll I just got a couple questions here. for Justin. I'm assuming the Department of Health has nothing to do with the road because there's not city sewer and water. On um, 2.13 number C. On the development agreement? Yes. From the health department. Oh, yeah, that, that's uh, standard language that's in there. From. Okay, that would be so I water, just. So that could be scripted. Up. Another one was, uh, let me see here. The bond letter of credit. Now, I pretty much have been paying you as it's been going along, which is no problem. It says the developer shall develop deposit fifteen thousand in cash to the city to secure payment of city costs. But I believe I've been paying them as I go along. It's still required that you deposit the money. We won't touch it. We'll get it back. Absolutely no problem. There was one other one. Uh, it had to do with certificate of occupancy. It says that no certificates of occupancy will be permitted and issued for any home within the final plot until the municipality's improvements are substantially completed. Now, I am going to be finishing my house in the next month and moving in there. Can we restrict How long that? Is it temporary? A building permit? No, it's temporary. Temporary certificate of occupancy from a building inspection, that wouldn't be a city, that'd be a state. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've never heard of a temporary. Yeah, there's certain conditions that do allow you in, but you know, typically what would happen is that the first layer of tar would have to be down. Yeah, but and that's not going to happen. Right. Until and so that's something that you would need to go and address to Mr. Bodie. If Mr. Bodie doesn't have that right, then he would be bringing that to us. But right now, the city. Yeah, section 9.2. We could stay that requirement, but. Mr. Bodie doesn't have that right to go and just say, well, everybody well, else needs tar, but you don't. This is going to be a problem for me. Yeah. But that would be the system, and we can't do that tonight. You'd have to advance to him. If he has that right, he can go ahead, and if he says, I need to have that council do that stay of allowing you in, I'm realizing that, you know, from the perspective, well, we have to wait until that time comes. We'll define the substantial completion of the road if it's just got the gravel on it that they built. Yeah, yeah, typically that's that's the minimum we, we need to have because it it becomes very gray often prior to that first lift being put on, you know, how much gravel's on it and if it's soft and it are the ditches graded we have full access. I mean I would I, I guess I would uh, I would recommend that we keep the language in there and if we need to uh, discuss uh, after this a specific uh, allowance for that one specific property maybe similar to what the mayor was suggesting that we could talk about that one specific property and yeah. draw up maybe a separate I agreement. just it's a concern of mine that John, I do you want get to that move. far I think if things are moving along we can take into account what happens state that state requirement, requirement. Yeah. yeah that sounds good I just don't want it to be a problem though when it comes time sure for me to move in the city says I can't move in after me spending half a million dollars on as long as we don't have to have the city move the snow out there while you're living there, and if it's snow until 4th of July, we it's not our road until there it's conveyed. Go. I think we're safe. Got her. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for your comments. Okay. Um, so we have a motion, I believe. Second. On the developer's agreement thus far? Yep. That was a discussion of that. Yeah. So any other comments, Jerry? No? No. Nope. Okay, I'll call the question. All those in favor of that motion to agree to advance the developer's agreement for signatures? Uh, any? Uh, all those in favor of that motion, signify by stating aye. 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 So those opposed, nay. Any abstentions? None. Top River Watershed District Maintenance Agreement. Bill, can you or uh, uh, Mr. Bodie? I, I might defer to Justin on this Justin too, but I, I just we found out about it last night that 
are going to be required to sweep the road? And I think that is because... I don't see that in this. By, uh, that was from last night, so... Once we take over control of it, then it becomes part of our city. Right. We sweep okay. the streets twice a year. Gene was just jumping. But is this a requirement that the Stock River Watershed District has in a maintenance agreement with us? Yeah, that is a that is one of their listed requirements in the uh, stormwater management facility maintenance operation plan. And, and the reasoning is because it's a non-tar area, and yeah, their reasoning for 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 wanting the the streets to be twice a year is just preventative maintenance. It's easier to remove the material from the street than it gets into the basin than it is for it to get right. into the basins and then have to try to clean it out or modify your base yeah. so that they drain properly. Okay. And so it becomes a moot issue after it's... Okay. Uh, well, I'm going to motion to approve then the maintenance agreement on the SRWD. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to advance the South River Watershed District maintenance agreement for signatures. All of those in favor of that motion signify by stating aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Any abstentions? Passed unanimous. City Engineer. Um, sales tax resolution. Here is where we're having 2020-06. Uh, the, the four of us this evening will be doing something, but before we do, whoever has a general synopsis of how sales tax becomes through fruition. This is, ju this is Justin. Justin, would you be the one, or between the two of you? You um, did a great job. This is a resolution that goes to the state state legislature has to approve it or deny it. Once they approve it, then it becomes a moratorium on our next election. Yeah. And the voters get to decide if they want it or don't. So this resolution doesn't start a sales tax. So if the voters listening, you get to vote at the next election whether you want it or you don't. Right. This resolution is for a half cent sales tax generating approximately $26,000. $26,000. Being your greedy finance guy, I would vote for the max. Clarification. So when I talked with um, Jeff, Senator, Senator Jeff Hall, Hall, to get this ball rolling, and Justin, I think I alluded to, to you about this same thing, um, that there's provisions that we can now piggyback onto. That's what Jeff had told me. He's he got. He gave me the language that says it is. Allow you in. And I asked you, they're not in. Yeah. You, you they're not going to let. They're not going to share their time. And rightfully so. And I think there's a little bit of background. St. Augusta pulled out because they weren't getting any sales tax from there. And so St. Augusta no longer is a member. Oh, of they are. They get two hundred thousand dollars. They're getting their. Well, they are. Tax. Oh, absolutely. The sales tax component. Is separate of okay. the same called APO. Okay. It just happened to be that the group that went in and, and applied to get the uh, half cent sales tax was that same group of people, but it's not tied to the APO. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. But we can. Even to be considered, it would be an Well, it's unfortunate that back when I was the mayor, we were part of that, and then after I got beat out, the, the concurrent mayor at that time opted that this wasn't a viable option for the city of Rockville, and we missed. We missed for the most part. The and it's not individuals. If I'm wrong, it's the same players that are involved in the sewer, sewer district. Yeah. And it's not individuals, it's always a council, it's not one mayor that has that capability, it does have influence. But if we can focus on the resolutions that's in front of us, and I think the $26,000, where did that come from? There's a value that was done from the Department, Department of Revenue, the we, we requested them to analyze uh, an estimate, and okay. so it's purely an estimate based on their analysis. Is, is there a written document someplace? I didn't see it that I'm aware of. It's, uh, and I just want to throw this out, it's interesting because St. Cloud is now doing the same thing. They're applying for a half a cent, but their, their, uh, 
they're looking at 75 million. Yeah. <laughs> it's an additional half percent. Yeah. Additional. Yes. yeah. And it says 5% and it talks about $26,000 that we would generate. We need to, and the formula or the process that we have has changed in this last year and it has to go past the legislation time certain by January 31st, both to the House and the Senate tax committees. Assuming there's a, a majority of this group that advances it, that's the first stepping stone, and then after that would be the thing. But where does the money, and I don't see it in here, so we have local sales tax, would it be the three granite companies that gets the lion's share, the three fabricators? No, we didn't get a detailed summary of like. But they didn't. Stone. You know, because I'm just going to use an illustration if I could. If we go down to Jora to uh, uh, the batteries, and I shared this very briefly with Mr. Bodie. I says you go to go down here to, uh, to Schaefer's. Uh, Schaefer's and buy a battery, and it's tough enough for a business in a small community to make a living. Now we're going to ask him to add an additional half a percent. It's not that he gets that. You know, it goes and passes back to the state. The state gives back to the city of Rockville. We use it wisely to fix roads or something like that, and that's just one isolated case. He has to be competitive against the big box stores in St. Cloud. So if we make it that much higher, they're going to run to the box store, and Mr. Bodie said, well, they already are charging a lot more sales tax in St. Cloud. Yes, but there's volume and stuff like that. So that's the quandary that I see. So anyways, having said that, there's a lot of debate. We're all, we're all paying for it. Lake Park is applying for an additional half percent. St. Cloud's applying for an additional half percent. And every one of us here goes there and shops in St. Cloud, doesn't bat an eye. When they get done at the checkout, they pay the bill and out the door they go. Yep. So this has been my beef the whole long, why we didn't get piggied onto this a long time ago. These funds would have been substantially more to the city. Because well, because we, the council at the time dropped out of APO. I, I, I know that, but I'm just saying that this, let, let's not look at this as, well, well it's going to cost us a, a little bit of money. When you buy a battery, it'll probably cost you 35 cents. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like, it, it's not an astronomical amount of money, but further down the road, as things grow and things change, it's going to be a big deal. And we're already paying that. Not in the city. Though. Not in the city of Rockville, but everybody here goes to St. Cloud and doesn't bat an eye when they buy it. So it's like... Well, maybe look at the local. other side of the coin. If everybody around us is taxing and maybe we're not, and we get gain a couple of businesses in town do because of it, we're going to do better than that half percent sales tax. Is that a way to look at it? I'd like to see more businesses come to this town. Yep. So what do you do? And then, and that's a good point also, and, and one other thing that I think is missing, and that is for how long of a period. So this 5% would be for until we get... So it is in... Yeah, the, that's what I was reading. So Don't 50, say 5%. It's no, a half a, half a half, percent. A half a percent for, for 15 years. And that's, that could, that's flexible. That could be whatever the council decides. That was just a proposal based on the project that was selected, you have the council in the resolution has to specify the tax rate, you have to specify the duration, uh, you have to specify a specific project that the funds will be used for, and what the estimated uh, amount is that will be raised over that period of time. So for the purposes of discussion, I put in there, and one of the important pieces is that it's got to be regionally significant project. Uh, so the most regionally significant project that, that I saw as far as road repairs go was Lake Road. Uh, from Pleasant Lake, uh, or I'm sorry, on the west side of Pleasant Lake, from uh, Lena to County Road 6. And so the estimated cost of that project was about 390000 so that would take about 15 years and a half percent. So that's where those numbers came from. All those can be changed. And the voters have uh, to approve this. That's if right. we approve it tonight and do all the paperwork, they have a right to vote this up or down this fall. I just want to make sure everybody knows that. And if I could, Mr. Mayor and, sure. and Member Herber, as a taxpayer, I don't buy my batteries from Schaefer because he's lower priced. I didn't buy my gas from Becky because she was lower priced. I don't buy my hamburger from George because he's lower priced. I buy it because they're my business and my city. These businesses here survive because the community right here supports them. Not because of Highway 23 traffic and not because of St. Cloud. It's because of these people's support. Becky came to me two years ago and asked me for my opinion on, on 
lying to that gas station. She's the one personality that can make that thing work. That's right. And that's why I bought the thing. Now she's gone. She was chased out. Not by the city. Okay. Great discussion. Any other discussion as it relates to the pros and cons between the four of us? With I'm, I'm going to make a motion to go ahead and approve it uh, just so that we can take a look. And like I said, maybe I won't get a second, but the voters have the right to vote it down if, if it goes through. I'll second it. Okay. There's been a motion and a second to advance resolution 2020-06, and that resolution would then uh, give these if it prevails, it would give the city council the directive to Mr. Bodie, uh, along with the committee, to uh, advance information time sensitive to get it to uh, the state by June, January 31st, January 30th, whatever. That's the gist of the motion. So I um, believe any other discussion? I'll just make a, a statement that personally I'd be opposed to it. The only reason. I'll go along with it it's because ultimately the taxpayers can have to say so in what's going to happen. And, and I, I agree with that. Okay. And, and I will, for principle of the public telling, I will be voting against it when the time comes. Not because, uh, the only thing is, I think we're just jeopardizing businesses one more time in the city of Rockville. So any other discussion? If not, I'll call the question. All those in favor of the motion, resolutions 2020-06 to advance that, please, more, please, uh, let's see, motion to accept that motion, uh, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. That's me, nay. Any abstentions? Seeing none. Roll call vote, Mr. Bodie. Mr. Mayor, with your permission, I'll have roll call show a 3-1 vote for the only abstention. Okay. The public record shows that. That passed by a three to one vote. Uh, we will move now to City Engineer Grant Bond's request. Uh, Mayor and Council, I guess that uh, this one we plan to submit a request to Senator Howe, the official deadline for uh, input from uh, cities for solicitation of a bonding uh, request has, has passed. But uh, Senator Howe has, has indicated that he would accept uh, a request from the city. So we plan to forward uh, a request to him. I guess um, if the council has any input on a specific amount or um, roadways that you would like to uh, forward. Uh, I have a list of essentially four roadways here that we've talked about in the past. Again, uh, regionally significant is what they talk about at the bonding level as well. So White Oak and Lena are probably, White Oak for sure is probably one that's you know, a tough sell to give any sort of regionally significance to. So I think the remaining ones are Roush Lake Road, uh, 220th, 88th are probably the ones that are most regionally significant. Those three total estimated cost is probably somewhere in the ballpark of about 1.1 million. So, uh, That'd be my suggestion if council wanted to move forward in that direction. Yeah, and that, that's on our road project list, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. It's a no-brainer. And and it does not take council action, so uh, at this No, stage, I, I, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. And, and that's the recommended amount that we go with, and who knows that better than Justin, so please proceed with that. Okay. Public works, uh, we had uh, circulated, I believe, was it? Thank you, Justin. Yeah, yeah. I think everything is good. Yep. Okay. Thank you for all your, all your work. Okay. Very good. Uh, administration uh, resolutions 2020-07 uh, annual appointments virtually the same as last year. I don't believe there's any changes unless Mr. Bodie have something to highlight that 
relevant. Was there a different bank? Uh, no, no, a different bank. Okay. I looked at it. I, I'll make a motion to approve. I didn't see any changes. Uh, the meeting changed. The regular meetings are going second Wednesday. Continues to be on second Wednesday at 6. Yeah. Yep, that's fine. In the event we can't do it in those two time frames, there would be a third opportunity for us to have workshops. And our intent, obviously, is to try to do as much as we can at workshops at five, if we need a workshop, and then council. Because really, we're, we create policy. It's our job to have it clear enough so that Mr. Bodie can run the day-to-day -day operations. So anyways, there was a motion Second. by Bill. Seconded by Brian to uh, advance resolutions 2020-07. The annual appointments that includes two pages of all of that. Uh, any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of that motion signify by stating aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. And the abstentions, none passed. Resolutions 2020-08, uh, that's refuge holler permits. There's three. Um, that have advanced the application for license. What's the wishes of the council? Make, a, uh, make a motion. Make a motion yep, to approve. Thank you. Very good. It's um, getting late. Right? Yep. Motions to advance 2020-08, and that would those three would be four if this prevails, and the new rate is Mr. Bodie would have it. Two hundred fifty dollars to be. Uh, yeah, that's in our fee schedule. Okay, so nothing there. Uh, was there a second? I'll second that. Okay. For Jerry. That's the refuge holler permit uh, license, or I mean uh, resolutions 2020 08. I'll call the question. All those in favor of that motion signify by stating aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Abstention, seeing none passed. Appropriations, anything? Nothing. Nothing at all? Uh, Jerry, you had uh, under others. Uh, yes, uh, the uh, Sportsman's Club. Uh, had some interest in that pleasant old Pleasant Lake City Hall, but they've decided they don't want it. So whatever the council wants to do with that building, do okay. it. Council's directed me to this building. Okay. But I did stay that. Yeah, no, but they gave me the final uh, decision. Okay. They're not going to work with it. Okay. Well, thanks for that report. No action needed on that? I'll uh, make a motion to adjourn. Very good. Second. Motion has been made and second to adjourn. That's not debatable. We'll call the question. All those in favor of the motion, aye. Signify by stating aye. Aye. Adjourn. Thank you, gentlemen.